Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview, my name is Joseph. On May 17th, the US Congress held its first UFO hearing in half of a century. It attracted worldwide attention, but many UFO fans were disappointed by the discussion. As one congressman put it, it felt like the hearing was just focusing on low-hanging fruit. The hearing brought out a tiny bit of material and easy explanations to appease the public, leaving the real serious evidence for a subsequent closed-door hearing. But is this the truth? If you're on the lookout for new revelations, there's really nothing special about this conference. But if you analyze the whole thing as carefully as we did, you'll find that the info that was presented has a hidden meaning behind it. Let's take a look today and see what the evidence presented has to say. At the beginning of the hearing, Congressman Carlson said that at the governmental level, their name for what we know as UFOs is UAP. UAP stands for Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, which I think sounds way cooler than UFO. Although UAPs cannot be explained, they are real. Pilots are hesitant and even ashamed to report UAP phenomenon for fear of being labeled incompetent or suffering from mental health issues. This really hinders intelligence analysis of UAPs. These UAPs are potential national security threats that need to be treated in the right way. Carlson went on to say that those who file UFO reports, including pilots, should not be considered crazy and should be seen as genuine witnesses. Such a statement shows that even members of Congress can't stand the attitude US officials have and the way they handle pilots reporting UFO incidents. Yet pilots are far more likely to see UFOs than any ordinary people on the ground. And it makes sense. Pilots of countries all around the world have commonly encountered UFOs, but most of them are reluctant to publicly explain or report on them, only talking about their experiences in private. If pilots can be encouraged to report UFO phenomenon, it would be of great help to promote UFO research and push it along. Later, Deputy Director of Naval Intelligence Bray said that since they were finding more and more UFOs appearing around military installations, they had begun using sensor drives to record this information. This is more beneficial and effective than relying on traditional human sightings and eyewitness descriptions. Using this equipment makes it convenient to use the data later on in collaborations with labs and experts in various fields, such as physicists, metallurgists, meteorologists. It's interesting that metallurgical experts were mentioned here. This shows that there has been at least some debris found at sites of previous UFO sightings. If there were no physical evidence, there wouldn't be any need to seek out metallurgical experts. This could be to determine whether the debris recovered is indeed from extraterrestrial origin. Then he released a previously unpublished video recorded in 2021 by an FA-18 Super Hornet pilot of a very fast unidentified flying object in front of the fighter jet. In a freeze frame, you can see that there's a spherical object, which they have not been able to identify or explain so far. There are more than 144 such reports so far. Of all of these, more than 100 UFO videos were captured by the military alone. He released another video. It's of a triangular UFO recorded by US Navy personnel through night vision video equipment in 2019. The UFO strobes continuously in flight and two triangular UFOs can be seen. The video had been made public before, but the flying object was mistaken for the legendary American TR-3B aircraft. Bray explained that they were able to record an identical triangular object with the night vision device when they used it to record a commercial drone. This is because of the special imaging principle of the night vision device. After the SLR camera is connected, a triangular spot of light appears. What Bray means is that it's impossible to determine whether the object recorded on the video was a human aircraft or a UFO based solely on the fixed strobe of the light point. But he also said that he's not claiming that all UFOs can be debunked or explained away like this. He was just pointing out that some UFO phenomenon can indeed be explained. Adam Schiff, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, noted that 18 of the 144 reports show that UFOs have the ability to remain stationary in high winds, or move abruptly against the wind, and can suddenly accelerate very quickly. This is especially without a discernible propulsion system. He asked if these flight characteristics were developed from advanced technology in other countries. 
Bray replied that he believed no aircraft from any other country could fly without a discernible propulsion system, including those currently under development. What he meant by this was that UFOs are definitely not some country's new secret aircraft. He also mentioned that the sensor data confirms that most of these recorded UFOs are actual physical entities. This is very crucial. He's basically acknowledging that most UFOs are not an atmospheric or optical illusion, nor are they projections from other dimensions. They are real solid objects. So if a UFO is a tangible object, then it can crash and leave debris to be collected. This perfectly coincides with the clue of metallurgical experts' involvement mentioned earlier. A congressman named Gallagher asked a very pointed question. He said, we all know that in 1952, the US Air Force established a project, Blue Book, to investigate UFOs. So have there been any investigations into UFOs before that? And are these plans relevant to the current investigation? Maltry hesitated at this point and replied that he couldn't speak to what may have predated Project Blue Book, including the Roswell incident and other such incidents. Notice here that he said he can't talk about these things. If he didn't know what happened before Project Blue Book, including the Roswell incident, he could have said just that he didn't know or that he didn't have the relevant information. But he said that he couldn't talk about it. So he probably knew about Roswell and what happened, but couldn't say anything. Or it's possible that the Roswell incident was just an isolated event before Project Blue Book. Maybe a similar event had happened only once and didn't happen again after Project Blue Book so its records and research reports didn't survive. But if the Roswell incident was really a high altitude balloon as the Air Force claims, then why did it go to great lengths to set up a Project Blue Book to conduct more than 10 years of UFO research? Why would they continue this kind of research through various institutions over the decades? It doesn't make much sense, hence the massive UFO enthusiast community. The congressman then asked about reports of UFOs flying close to sensitive military facilities and special UFO encounters. This was referring to the Malmstrom Air Force Base in the United States in 1967. Ten nuclear ICBMs were rendered inoperable after encountering a UFO. All ten ICBMs were fitted with nuclear warheads. Rumors of this incident spread within the US military, but it's never really been confirmed. Bray replied that he had heard about this, but didn't have the relevant data since this wasn't within the scope of the UAP data. But the congressman clearly wasn't letting him off easy, and under his repeated questioning, Maltree explained. If something was officially brought to our attention, we would look at it. Uh, there are many things that are out there in the ether that aren't officially brought to our attention. So how would it have to be officially brought to your Excuse attention? I'm bringing it to your attention. Sure, so. <laughs> this is pretty official. Sure. So we'll go back and take a look at it, but generally there is some um, authoritative figure that says there is an incident that occurred, we'd like you to look at this. Uh, but in terms of just tracking what may be in the media that says that something occurred at this time, at this place, uh, there are probably a lot of leads that we would have to follow up on. I don't think we have resources to do that right now. From these answers, you can clearly tell that Bray and Moultrie definitely knew about this matter. They kept glancing at each other under the constant questioning of the congressman. And just one day after the hearing, the British Daily Mail wrote an exclusive report on former militia ICBM Commander Robert Sales, slamming the Ministry of Defense officials for the hearing. They lied and said that they had no knowledge of the 1967 shutdown of nuclear missiles in the US Air Force bases. Salas, who's a retired officer, just reported the incident to the Ministry of National Defense last year. He said that he's been telling the outside world about this incident for more than 20 years after he retired, and he also reported the incident to the newly established UAPTF task force last year. Another member touched on another sensitive topic. Do we have any sensors underwater uh, to um, detect on submerged UAPs? This refers to USOs, underwater unknown objects. So I think uh, that would be more appropriately addressed in closed session, sir. From this, we can infer that USOs are highly confidential. It is easier to judge whether something is an unidentified object when it's underwater, because things like warships and submarine detectors can better capture these underwater objects. So USOs should be key to the later closed door meeting. We actually have a recent video on USOs. If you're interested, you can click on that link down below and watch. So what was the purpose of this hearing? 
It said that Congress called for this hearing because it was dissatisfied with the military's budget. This is because on April 5th, the U.S. military secretary of defense and chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff just attended a hearing in the House of Representatives on the 2023 defense budget. The budget is a record high and some of it must include UFO research institutes under the Ministry of Defense. It's estimated that the budget of this branch will be significant. So this hearing is a routine accountability of Congress to the military, just this time about UFOs. I will say that all the content of today's video only represents my personal opinion and is for reference only. When it comes to things like UFOs and aliens, what will come will always come, no matter human beings' curiosity or fear. So we might as well face the facts and study them with a more open mind. Doing so may instead help us to find a better response from alien life. Would humanity be ready to openly accept this discussion and how might we handle it its full disclosure? Perhaps in our lifetimes, we will see it unfold and become more mainstream. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. What other interesting insights do you have on this hearing? Please leave your comment down below and we'll see you next time. One last thing, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click like on the video so that you can see more videos to come. We'll see you next time.